Hey there, welcome to the Eurostep, a Milwaukee Bucks podcast, proudly a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network and GSPN, and presented by our pals at Prize Picks. Got a dub this weekend. I'll share Ooh, that with Rohan okay. and everyone else later. Yeah, I was due. I was due, but still have had, been having a bunch of fun with our friends at Prize Picks, but having even more fun. Back on the pod, mano y mano with one Rohan Cadi. It's been a while, Rohan. We've had a bunch of guests on. We've done special episodes. You've been a world traveler, but very excited to be back. I was looking at the calendar the other day thinking, what is training camp? Like a month away? A couple weeks away, folks. We're already in mid-September. It felt like fall a week ago. It's starting to feel like summer again. It was but it was the false fall. We, yeah, we the get f- it every classic year. Classic false fall. I still enjoyed it. But buck season is around the corner. I'm very excited to be back podcasting with my number one podcast buddy here. And we've got a bunch of mailbag questions to answer because we've been, you know, here's what we think people are interested in hearing about the Bucks. We're good at that. We do that all the time. Sometimes it is good, though, especially after we've been talking about the team in its current form for months with no changes, no games, no nothing to change what we're talking about. Let's hear what other people want to hear about the Bucks. So that's what we're going to do today. Rohan, uh, how you doing? It's so good. It feels weird to have not been here for a few weeks. I think it's been like three weeks since you and I did a pod together, Ty. Just it's, us, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, just us. And it's it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. I don't like it. It's I, I'm so happy to be back in here. Just a lot of things going on, traveling. I'm, I'm and you probably can hear it, but I'm I'm sick too. Yeah, uh, fighting through it here. I'm still I'm still pushing through. Nevertheless, we persevere. There's a Chris Middleton comp to make here. Give the guy three weeks off. He comes back hobbled. What are we doing? What's going on? We need to trade Rohan for draft pieces. No, I'm I'm just kidding. Like like Chris Middleton, I want to stick with you forever, Rohan. I, I was going to say, do you want to trade Chris Middleton? No, I don't. And I actually, did that not come up at all in any question? I don't think it did. Wow, that might be a first. Good I think for, that means we really, really cultivated it. Yeah, good, good I, I think we bashed the Chris haters away enough. I, I want to do a quick aside. People on YouTube see I got the Pokemon coffee cup today. It's also Christmas themed. Ignore that part. Um, I don't know if you saw this, Rohan, but I was aged a thousand years. I think yesterday. It was yesterday, Monday, because I saw it was 20 years since the release of Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, a game which I remember receiving and playing but even worse, a remake of a game I also remember seeing and playing. Do you know how soul crushing it is for a remake of a game that you enjoyed soon ish after it came out? I was probably a little young to play like Pokemon Red, Yellow, Blue, Green, like right away. But like I remember playing them before Gold, Silver, Crystal came out. And then I remember the remake 20 years. Wow. That's crazy. It's we're we're we've been doing th- this thing for a while, Ty. Like, <laughs> also, why would they remake a game like two so, years later? Uh, well, it wasn't. Two, it was you know it's probably about ten years later to uh, continue the the aging part of this all. But uh, because the software uh, or actually the hardware changed, so you could you can bring a Pokemon or at least could. Some things have changed, but. From Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire all the way up to the newest games, but you could not bring the first two generations. There was like a jump between the Game Boy slash Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance. So basically that's why. So that, you know, if they could communicate with the newer games, they made some changes. Anyway, no one's interested in, in hearing this. I'm interested. Well, thank you. But most people aren't interested. Let Most people want to hear about the Bucks. We have a lot of mailbag questions. We're going to get into it. We're going to start with our Discord. We took them there and on Twitter. I think we'll get to all of them. We'll see. Um, but make sure you join the GSPN Discord and join GSPN Premium, where you can get weekly exclusive GSPN After Dark podcasts. We've had some really fun ones lately. Uh, and more And most content. of them are evergreen, too. Yeah, a lot of them are evergreen. You know, we're drafting things. We're going over best of all times list, things like that. Uh, gspn.info. It's at our Substack, which is also reached at gspn.substack.com. The Discord link is on the About page if you're looking for it. Okay. First question from Parker. Rate the AJs and then tell me if I'm crazy to think AJJ might have already proven he has the highest ceiling of all of them, even if he's a year away. 
Good, a lot of a lot of AJJ stuff going on. He is dominating the workout scene like no Bucks draft pick has done in years. I've had people be like, "Oh, you're forgetting Thon. Thon didn't do this. Thon Wait, was not driving through the lane AJJ? and posting. AJ Johnson, could, or is it Andre Jackson Jr.? I assume that's AJ Johnson. The see, this is the problem. <laughs> I assume that's AJ Johnson because Andre Jackson Jr. I don't think he would say even if he's a year away. Yeah, no, that's fair. I understand. I mean, there's, a, there's, a, too, there's a Twitter but... question where it refers to AJ, and it's like, which one? This thing I know. For? <laughs> I know. Well, I think I'll, I'm going to cheekily answer that one later. Um, okay. But rate them. So which one is – I'm going to rank them, not rate them. I think that's the spirit of the question, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think AJ Green first. If we're talking about right now, no question. Wait, highest ceiling? Uh, no, he said rate rate the AJs and then tell me if I'm crazy to think AJJ oh, might have already read. proven he has the highest. I, can't read. I think that's still a debate. I, I think AJ Green's involved in that debate either way. I think so too. I think that's fair to say. But I think right now he is the best player. I think then Ajax is the next player. Unequivocally. Unequivocally. AJJ is the worst player of the three right now. I don't think it's crazy to think AJJ has the highest ceiling of them all. Like he has shown that he, his handle, his speed, his athleticism. But then you like Ajax is kind of close to that. But Ajax, you know, people always want to call him a point guard. He just doesn't move like a point guard with the ball. He's he's not a point guard. He's connective tissue. Like that's he all plays, he knows. To he do. plays like a four or five in a guard's yeah. body. Like he which is good. The, it has a he lot of like, value. Even not like, you know, that or like a Bruce Brown kind of player. You yeah. know what I mean? Like he's not like initiating pick and rolls or breaking down the defense. Like he'll make a really nice pass, but it's it's just a different kind of – also just like the ability to score from like that position, which he just doesn't have at all. Like just he, score in general, yeah. <laughs> the score in general, like, you know, corner threes are nice. Like offensive putbacks, offensive rebound putbacks are nice. But like when have you ever seen him like size up? someone off the dribble and then go score from there. It almost never happens. Like that's if you're you're not really a point guard if you can just never break someone down like that. So And here's the thing though. We don't know if AJ Johnson can actually do that yet. Right. So it's which is why he does third. have the highest ceiling. Yeah. I would agree. But it's because we have no idea what he is. He's just, he's like that 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 family guy meme where it's like it's a box. It can be anything. Right? Like it could it could he could be anything. We don't know. Could even be we a just boat. Have, it could even be a boat. Yeah. yeah. We just have to wait and see. But I think right now it's safe to say it's the highest ceiling. I think, yeah, he's tearing up work, off-season workout videos. Man. Like, no buck. No buck ever. If people said Bucks draft picks do this every year. That's what I, I got. And I was like – Do you think uh, Bucks draft – do you think the Bucks have a draft pick every year? First off, great point. Second off, like I don't remember DJ Wilson having a single moment. I, I, just, I also think of DJ Wilson. I mean, sorry, but I don't I don't remember the point where I was like, oh man. I mean, even like Dante, I don't remember Dante. Was Rashad the Vaughn and, tearing it up? He was in summer league slightly, but it even then felt a little unsustainable. It was like yeah. just pouring in mid rangers, not really getting open at all. Uh this is different. I mean, it doesn't mean he's gonna be a Marjan good player this year. Good, no. Marjan's still not. He's at some of these. He's still not doing that. It's like he's, at five. The, he's at the same runs as AJ Johnson. I love that. It's we, crazy. AJ Green is at some of these too. And Chris Livingston, a lot of the Bucks young players together. And none of them are having the same kind of moments as AJ Johnson. Like Chris Livingston, like hits a big three. Like AJ Green, AJ Green in one of these had a sick like pump fake and then rise where the defender like flew around him and then he drilled the three. It's like, that's really good. Like that's a great play. That's a great thing to be able to do it's different though than like hezzy tween cross dunk on someone and again maybe that's not sustainable maybe he never ends up being an nba caliber player that's certainly on the table but the flashes that we're seeing i think is pretty much all you can ask from the quote-unquote super raw 23 23 overall pick 19 year old um so yeah that's that's how i would rank them i i i just feel bad about saying aj green has the lowest ceiling because I think he's already pushed his actual way above these two guys. He has the highest floor, for sure. For sure the highest floor. I think his ceiling is pretty good, too. Would like you I, put I, it up near, like, an Ajax? I think I would. I would. Yeah. I would. I don't I'm think thinking, that's, un, like, un, like, it's not crazy to say. I'll, I'll say it this way. 
I think Ajax has more glaring limitations that would limit a ceiling than AJ Green. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. AJ Green is an NBA caliber player right now, and I don't think he has one single glaring weakness. No, it's not even defense. It's not no, like athleticism. If you, like I think he keeps up enough. Like I, I think he's a very well-rounded player. Yeah, I mean, like shot creation, I guess, but that also yeah. hampers Ajax. Yeah, big time. I think I would say it hampers Ajax more. I've seen <laughs> AJ Green have some pretty nice, like post fade jumpers. Like there's nothing like that in Ajax's game right now. So, uh, yeah, I would say their ceilings are on par. AJJ is a little higher just because on ball plus creation is like one of the biggest, you know, advantages, value skills, right? Like you're you're now fueling a whole offense. You're not just part of an offense. And again, clearly not saying AJJ is there. A- AJ Johnson. Let's just refer to them as like their full names on the show so we don't confuse people. But yeah, it is, uh, it is a lot. Yeah. Okay, next question here uh, in the Discord is from Pizzle. What do you expect from Gary Trent Jr.? A better all-around body than Beasley? Yeah, I think that's like the bare minimum. <laughs> yeah, I, if he's not that, it's a massive disappointment. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I think that's I a pretty him, low expectation. I expect him to be a solid offensive engine. I know you and I have talked about this uh, like after the signing, but it's like we could see him possibly outdoing Chris Middleton for points per game. Yeah, it's like, like it, you know, probably not points per minute, but points per game for sure. Yeah, Chris is going to be limited. They're going to they're going to bring him back slowly as they always do and poor Chris has to deal with it again. I know. I feel so bad, man. Yeah. I mean, hey, if he's healthy April, May, June, that's a To good be trade. fair, we do you think we would be more concerned if Doc hadn't said, "By the way, he had two surgeries." Like <laughs> I mean, I assume it probably would have came out eventually, but I mean, if we didn't know, then no, we'd be like, "Oh, it's the healthiest offseason he's ever had." And maybe it's still the healthiest offseason he's had in <laughs> in years. So he only had two ankle surgeries. That's it. Um, but no, every every report is he's moving around well. He'll be ready for camp. We'll see, we'll know for sure, you know, by the time camp actually starts in a few weeks here. But I think for Trent, I expect really someone who is an, a, a huge spark plug on the offensive end while also being a better defender than Beasley was. I don't think he's going to be way better, but I think he's going to be better. Which I is think to he's say, going to know what he should be on defense more than Malik Beasley, Yeah, which I think says a lot. Malik Beasley came into last season thinking he was going to be Drew Holiday, yeah. uh, which is not made up, by the way. He said that. I know. I still uh, can't believe that he, that he did that. And he tried to play like him. He, he was did. picking up. He was picking up guys full court. Full credit to him. He tried his best. Didn't work. Uh, have fun in Detroit, man. <laughs> but I mean, at least he should be able to know what he needs to do on the defensive end. He's a more established player than Malik Beasley, which is crazy for a guy who's less than a year older than Marjan. Wow. But he he is. He's an established vet at this point. Yeah. Which is crazy. Uh, like, that dude's 25. I am expecting him to finish the best starting lineup in the NBA this season. That's my expectation. I think they're going to be the best. If Malik Beasley can do it. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. They basically were already. I think Denver's got worse, which they are, they are always one of is the best Is Denver's ones. window closed? But not fully closed, but it's not great. It's not great, is it? No. And I've seen some people go, why don't people talk about them the same they talk about the box? I don't know. But I kind of wonder, maybe people do, and it just doesn't, you know, like if someone says something about the Bucks, we all hear about it. We probably don't hear about every single thing Kendrick Perkins or whoever says about the Nuggets. So I don't know if there's a preference there or not, but uh, yeah, it's not great over there. I, I would not feel good at all if I were a Nuggets fan. I'll say that. Um, we got a trade question, unless you had anything else on Trent. We're very no, excited think, about Trent. Very excited about Trent. Jules SQ or Jules Q. What's a realistic Bobby or Pat C trade that you'd be willing to include a 2031 first for? And why is it Wendell Carter Jr. for Bobby? LOL. I don't even know if I would. I mean, I would probably, probably do that. I'd, but I'd like, probably do that. I don't think it makes a ton of sense. I don't think Orlando would do that. Uh, maybe they would. They seem to want all their centers still. For I, some reason. I'm kind of out of trade mode right now. Me too. It's, I, I want it's... him to check ball first. I the only trade and I've said this before the only trade I would really be like you know what like go for it right now is just dump Pat you know but it's like even, like if it's free I guess yeah like a free here here's a Pat Connaughton 
Yeah, I don't do, know if do that even exists him? anymore. Teams are pretty full. I was looking. That's this the up. thing. They don't have much. Like, there's like two teams with cap space, or one. And there's one. There's one team. I think only the Cavs need to add another player. Like every team What's now has at least four Isaac teams. Okoro. That's the. That's why I was looking into it. Because I'm like, what is actually? Are we going to get into like he's just unsigned in the season at this point? They can't yank the qualifying offer. He could do that. I don't think he wants to do that. Um, pretty pretty crazy situation there. They're not a deep team. If you look at their their roster, like they kind of need more NBA level wing players. It's a very bizarre thing. But anyway, um, big role for the minivan again, which is unfortunate. Yeah, it's for, not for Cavs. It's, yeah, it's not ideal. Um, but I'm sure you would take like Larry Nance for Bobby. Does that work under second apron? It does. Like, I'd probably like, do that, but do you need to include the first there? No, I wouldn't want to. So that's the thing. I kind of want to hold the first for now. Like, you, like we don't, there's not many picks to trade. Like you don't need yeah. to do it for like a margins trade. A Pat or Bobby trade at this point is an on the margins trade. We'll get in. There's some questions about it later, but the rotation is pretty firm. Yeah. You don't need to make a seismic shift in any sort of rotation right now. Exactly. Check ball first. You made yeah. a great point, Todd. So, yeah, I, I'm just I'm February focused on trades at this point. I, I think the Bucks are going to be too late. Too. The window's passed. Yeah, yeah, the window to make a move, not the you're not saying yes. like they're they're cooked. Like there's just not the time right the, now. The trade window has passed. Yeah, I, I think not their whole thing was yeah. their their whole thing was continuity. I think they want to go into the season with returning as many players as possible with these upgrades they've made. I think they can do that. I, I think it's not a huge deal. I would like to see a defensive center, but again, like I'm also willing to. Like, give Bobby a chance. Can Bobby fit in better this coming season? Maybe. I'm not going to, you know, I'm Last not going to really expect it. Last season was his worst season as a buck in terms of fit, in yeah. terms of production. The rest of his t- tenure as a buck has been fairly productive. 100%. Like, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility to say that with all of the change happening last year, that might have affected Bobby Portis. Definitely. Like, it's it's possible it affected everyone. If it can affect Damian Lillard, it can affect Bobby Portis. Yeah. I mean, like, if they're – maybe they, let's say they switch more with Bobby on and he goes from, like, oh, this defense is rough with this blitzing. They're like, okay, it's fine. Like, then maybe he's shooting well enough, his threes fall a little bit, or he just continues to score around the rim, get offensive rebounds. Like, he can be a very useful player. So – and then, yeah. Pat, you know – Take I'm that lunch pail off. mentality. I, I think it's a good mentality. Uh, chop wood, and, carry water. Exactly. And Pat, we'll see, but I'm like, I'm not desperate to dump him. The Bucks clearly are not concerned about the second apron. I think if you can get under it for almost nothing, you should. But again, you can do that in February. Like if Pat has a renaissance year, that's a very useful player and one you'd like to have in the playoffs. So let's see. So I, I guess I don't really have a realistic trade right now. I'd be very surprised if they made a trade before 2025. Yeah. So let's say, uh, let's say it'll, uh, are you taking more or less than two and a half games for Pat to get hit in the face? I mean, hopefully it's less. Like if game one, his first minute, he gets smacked. Like I think he's going to be on I fire think we're prime the season. For a prime Pat Connaughton yeah. season if yeah, that no. happened. He gets like, on the court and then like Paul George just like elbows him in the face or something. It's like, oh. Don Maker wait. karate chop from off screen. <laughs> he just runs <laughs> in from the tunnel. <laughs> He's just like I'm here. Okay. Oh, we're, we're at the game courtside. We go. We never got the chance to thank you. Don looks at us and goes, "And you never have to." <laughs> it's not the hero. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, a weird hypothetical. It really is. We don't uh, encourage violence. No, but... we don't. Uh, <laughs> next question. Unless it's hitting Pat in the face. Uh, I mean, just you know, he's not hurt by this. Yeah, let's be clear. Just it it awakens something in him. It's been proven scientifically. If the Bucks can tweet out or post on their socials a a compilation of Pat getting hit in the face, yeah, you, he's in on it. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. He has no choice. So uh, next question here is from Sir Fix a Lot. I like that. It's such yeah. a good username. Uh, we keep looking for a way for the younglings to take minutes, but with the surplus of veterans at the two slash three and the clear advantage and stability of AJ Green, there's only one realistic option: playing over Bobby, specifically in a small ball lineup with Giannis at the five. The question is, there real is there is there really a foundling that can his, pull it his off? His terms for young players are just killing me. Right? No, I it's just can't very, read. Like, code Lord of the Rings. <laughs> like I love these terms. Go on. Isn't foundling like a Star Wars thing? Oh, maybe it is. I mean, younglings, like it's it's got a, it's some sort of fantasy context, I feel. 
No. CL has the size, athleticism, defense, and potentially shooting, but he has a big question mark. AJJ, is that Andre Jackson Jr. or AJ Johnson? Who knows? His it's, shooting I can be he, an issue. Yeah. This one's this one's Jackson. This one's Ajax, and, yeah. And last season, he was a bit light to play there, but has the length. If he has added weight and stopped fouling all the time, he could do it. Smith, way too raw and defensively challenged. Marjan, I think we kind of know what Marjan is by now. Yeah, I think we do. Um, I, I mean, I think it's one of the first two. I, I think I'd be pretty surprised. I don't think Tyler Smith will play regularly unless someone's hurt. Marjan, I mean, he'll get still, the first shot. I don't know if Marjan will. I think he could. I think he got the first shot in summer league. It didn't go great. We'll see. Maybe we're just over. Maybe I'm just over indexing summer league. I think some of camp will determine this too, and just how everything goes. Um, there's still like some optimism coming out about Marjan here and there. I don't know if that's a smokescreen or what. I, I I don't even know if it's playing over Bobby or just like playing, you know, kind of as the 10th guy with Bobby. I, I still think Chris Livingston has the best shot. I think Andre Jackson Jr., Giannis at the 4-5, or five, it's just bad spacing. And maybe Dame can overcome that. I, I don't think that's ideal. And I just think teams are just going to ignore him. So, I mean, they're going to ignore any of these guys, but you have to be able to do something about that. And I just don't believe that Andre Jackson Jr. can. I also kind of don't believe that Marjan can. I mean, I think part of the summer league issue was like open in the corner, dribble into a missed pull up, like not open, pull up immediately, drive into two defenders versus shooting, like the kind of bad perimeter player decisions you just can't afford in a contending lineup with Giannis and Dame. Uh, I think CL was a better decision maker there. Andre Jackson Jr. kind of was, but still had his own record scratches. And yeah, Tyler Smith, I mean... He knows what to do if he's in the corner. I, I don't I don't worry about that part, but he has no idea what to do defensively, so I'd be pretty surprised if it was him. I muted myself. Uh no, there you I'm go. really I'm really out of the swing of things. <laughs> uh, I think ideally, I think it's probably CL, right? Yeah. I just don't know if that's gonna happen right away. You no, know, I have like, no idea. We Chris Livingston is a guy you've converted me in, into a true believer, but he's still a big question mark. This is a guy who did not get any playing time last year, any meaningful playing time uh, last season, uh, aside from the, the Utah, Utah game. game. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, but he's also like he he didn't get a ton of a ton of run. Like Marjan got more run than CL last year. So, what's Doc gonna do? I think CL could be the answer, but I just don't know if Doc's gonna push or pull the right levers yeah I, I, it's going to be really fascinating i wish we got the same camp experience as nfl where they're like they get to be in and see the lineups more i feel like the bucks camp is a lot more secluded uh, but i can't wait every morsel of like lineups and everything i'm going to be gobbling up because i'm really excited to see who is getting the shots and how does it go um but yeah i think gobble, i think gobble. the premise the premise of the question is really good though because yeah i think outside of aj green I think it is just question marks on if any of the other young guys play. I think that's okay. Like, you got to earn it. I don't think any of them at this point have been, like, been able to prove that they are for sure plus rotation players. Andre Jackson Jr. is the closest, but I still think there's big question marks there uh, over the whole season sample, not just what he did against Indiana with no Giannis in the lineup. Uh, We got another one from Jules Q. Assuming a 10 to 11 man regular season rotation, who would you like to see get some playing time? How many mins does each player get? So I'm not going to go through the whole rotation. I would hope that Giannis and Dame play a little less than last season. Lower Hover 30s. around 30 to 33. Yeah, 30, 30, 32, 33. I mean, Chris, I would imagine, is closer to 30. Gary Trent Jr. may end up like leading the team in minutes. We'll see. He's the kind of player that can play with any lineup, I think. He's um, so young too. Yeah, he's just got like, that's you know, crazy. Running, I, it's running, still running it, wild. I say he's so young, but he's also my age, and I'm ancient. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough, not, stop with that. Uh, I think I would hope Brooke doesn't play a ton either. I mean, Doc was willing to. Do play you want to do guys. sub thirty? I I think he probably should, but then your big depth isn't good, so maybe he can't. exactly like twenty eight to thirty probably for Brooke. I would like to see his minutes per game, and then let Bobby soak up a lot of minutes. He's younger as well. Um, Doc played the guys a bunch of minutes late last season, but I don't know how much of that was 
like we kind of just need to develop this some chemistry together versus like I want to play these guys a ton of minutes. So I, I think we'll see. I don't know. Versus if... the depth wasn't great. <laughs> yeah. Also, also that too. I think and it was the, a combination, injuries, a combination yeah. of all of those, right? Which yeah. led to the inflated minutes load. And we all know what happened after that. Right. I think uh, that's, so yeah, that's a lesson. Be a priority. It's yeah. been a lesson that's been learned. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> so I, I hope. <laughs> Um, but to the answer to the question, who would you like to see? I think we kind of like touched on like Chris Livingston and Andre Jackson Jr. are probably the two guys who I don't think will regularly play, who I'm most intrigued to see play. Like it, if there's rest games, back to backs and like the rookies play, that's super fun as well. But in terms of like who do I think out of the young players can factor into the rotation this season, I would like to see Chris Livingston and Andre Jackson Jr. get opportunities to do so. Yeah. So that's the 10 man is the starting five. Yep. We've got Delon Wright, Torian Prince, uh Bobby. Bobby. AJ Green. Is AJ nine. Green. So and then, then it's one of those two. Those two guys battling Pat for ten. It's a deep team. I mean, that's why people go, Oh, I, I you know, I'm tweeting excited about Andre Jack uh, God damn. AJ Johnson. And it's like, oh, he's gonna play two minutes. It's like, yeah, I mean, they go like twelve deep with guys you want to see. Play. What are you talking about? You're going to see him play. play. You're going to see him play yeah. thirty minutes. Time. I'm going to see him play thirty minutes. Heard announced their schedule in Oshkosh. I'm the big winner of the Oshkosh. So so excited. I Let's guess that go. was the news. We said we don't have any news, but like... yeah. Well, I, I think I touched on it on the last pod. Oh, but in yeah, the last they announced one, yeah. they announced that. I'm shout out to Kyle Van Duho for joining me. Um, but yeah, I think they're going to be playing in Oshkosh, which is you had a good. You had a good running guest, Ty. Yeah, I know. I, I was busy. Well, we started together with Jim Ozarski, the great the great big Jim, and then. Nathan Marzion and Kyle Bandujo, thank you for taking the time to chat with me in Rohan's absence. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for carrying the torch. 100%. Is that the right term? Kind of. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, Clayton, next question here. I yeah, got Clayton. it. Uh, oh. Would you rather see the young guys get playing time early in the season or in the middle? I'm of the opinion I'd try to bank a lot of wins early, play the young guys Christmas to All-Star, then ramp up minutes for the playoff rotation from All-Star to end of season. Just not really sure it works like that. I think it can. Do you? I think it can. See, the thing is, like, in the, in the from the beginning of the season to like Christmas, I don't think you're going to play a lot of the young guys. One, because you know we got the what is it, the Emirates NBA Cup? Oh God, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sponsored by Emirates, if you didn't know. Yeah. In uh, case you were wondering, how did Kia drop the ball on that? Because they've got the awards. I feel like you just want more. If, I, if yeah. I'm Kia, or maybe build a car that, you know, you could park in Milwaukee. That's also an option with that money, I suppose. <laughs> That's not, you're, you're, you're preaching to the wrong choir about Kia, man. <laughs> uh, please, uh, no free ads, though. I don't think that's an ad. <laughs> no, I think that's the opposite of an ad. Watch, I'm going to get an email right after the pod. We secured a new sponsor, Kia. You haven't said anything disparaging, have you? It's still time to take this down. Uh, but uh, no, uh, yeah, the I think with the the NBA Cup, they're gonna want to play their young guys, not play their young guys a ton. They're gonna want to play their vets, try to get to, um, their legs going, stuff yeah. like that. And I think towards the middle of the season, and inevitably, knock on wood, nothing serious. Guys are gonna get hurt. Guys are yeah. gonna miss time. That's when you can get the young guys. And then towards the end of the season, you can ramp back up with the vets, uh, excise the young guys from the rotation, and you're 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 set to go. I think it's just going to be more opportunity based. You know, I think as much as we talk about the Bucks as like, oh, you know, let's ramp down Giannis and Dame and Chris and Brooke and keep them. Like those guys want to play. And I just think it's going to be more about, okay, you know, somebody tweaked an ankle and they're out for two weeks. There's an opportunity for a young guy for those two weeks or what is it, March, the month with all the back to back. So, you know, they'll probably play more in March by default because some guys will get rest, hopefully, and not play. 14 games in 28 days or whatever it ends up being, maybe more than that. Um, they have multiple back-to-backs. And I think after March 6th, they don't have more than one day off in a row for the rest of the month. Like, I, I think it's going to be more uneven like that, which maybe isn't the best for the young guys. But again, this is not a developmental team. This is a contending team. Uh, you still want to win a lot of games and have a high seed. I'm not saying you want to push the, the vets and not play the young guys at all. But I, I just think it's going to be a little more of a seesaw with like, you know, rest and injuries than and the other. I mean, you know, 
we're talking about the young guys like playing four of them versus playing none. Also, I mean, maybe some of them legitimately earned spots like AJ Green did last year. And then now now it's a different conversation. So I, I don't CL, know. CL, we can hope. I mean, I'll go. I, I, I'm going crazy. If CL is in the rotation opening night, I don't know what. I, I think I'm going to have to get some wall art or something. I mean, I I, I, I got to commemorate this. Maybe I I'll think CL up, could make that happen. I think, put it, I don't know. I, I think we have more merch connections. Just 24 here, unrelated to anything, and then something CL over there. Move the Creed poster back. Shout out to Creed, though. Could do that. Not the band. Bands are. Why is the, I was going to say, is is the band get canceled or something? No, I mentioned I was talking about Creed, and Numak goes, Oh, you mean the movie? Like, yeah, of course I mean the movie. <laughs> See, that's. I feel like the band Creed is more in the zeitgeist now. Well, yeah, I think that's a TikTok thing. Everyone's like, is like it? oh, this music's actually good. Yeah, I'm it's not like on the, TikTok. It's like the Divorce Dad playlist vibe is coming back popular. I feel like I'd see like videos on Twitter every day about that their their halftime performance. Yeah, it's pretty epic too. Yeah. I feel like the the bands that got ripped apart for a while, but they were like genuine the whole time, are now having a resurgence. I feel like Nickelback has become actually popular now. Really? Yeah, not popular, but like appreciated more. Hmm. Speaking of appreciation, we appreciate our friends at Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app with more than five million active members. Football is back, and it is the perfect time to get in on the action with Prize Picks, where all you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Listen, Caleb Williams didn't have a great game, but was still more than 0.5 passing yards, which was a win on prize picks this week and every week in September. One yard gets an automatic win every football weekend in September. That's four weeks of free Ws. Do not miss this deal on prize picks because it's gone when September ends. Love that little reference as well. You can play prize pick alongside Rohan and I. That's cool. You can also play alongside Drewski, Joe Budden, an MMA champ, Sugar Sean O'Malley. I I know I'm excited about that part of it for sure. So make sure to check out Prize Picks. I mentioned I got a big dub. I was actually going on the basketball slate, which is still live. We went Nafisa Collier, Aaliyah Boston, Kelsey Mitchell, Tina Charles, Caitlin Clark. Combination of points, rebounds, PRA, and just points for Kelsey Mitchell, who is like, it's always set at like 20.5. She always gets 21 or 22 That was a five out of five, huge win. Thankfully, it went to overtime. Kaitlyn Clark was actually going to be a little short, but that game went into OT. The Fever won, and I won, which is so thrilling on prize picks. You can do basketball. You can do football. You can do baseball. My favorite hitter fantasy score. That's going on. Maybe maybe fade the Brewers right now, unfortunately. Maybe not. Maybe that's a reverse jinx. We'll see. You can find out by downloading the prize picks app today using code Eurostep to get 50 bucks instantly when you play $5. That's code Eurostep on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks run your game. Okay. Back to Ooh. the mailbag. Thank I you. Almost, I almost had a few wins. Almost. Almost. Nah, you're gonna you're gonna get them next time, Rohan. Yeah. I'm thinking Thursday, I'm going to look at the basketball slate. We'll have a football game on. Like, that should be – I like to sprinkle in a variety. Yeah. That, I think, is the most fun. Good sports time, as we were talking before we started. Great sports recording. time. Great, great sports, sports time. Even without the best one, still a great sports time. James okay. Proc now. Okay. I'm beating yeah. you to him. I'm gobbling these up. I'm a gobbler today. Oh, boy. Uh, what's one change slash unanswered question from last season that you are watching for when the season starts? For example, I'm looking to see if the Bucs will be able to reestablish a defensive identity, especially when they drop. What are you looking for, Rohan? I would think, I would agree and say a defensive identity. I wouldn't even necessarily say, especially when they drop, because I feel like it's not going to be what it was, right? It's just not. There's not, you don't have the personnel to really execute a good deep drop anymore you just don't like last season we saw that that hasn't changed this season there's still no freak of nature point of attack defender on the bucks roster anymore so i don't even think that the drop is necessarily where i want to see them establish themselves but i do agree a defensive identity anything 
I'll take anything, Ty. Whether it's one through four switching, whether it's uh, one through five switching in certain lineups, whether it's seeing what you can do with Bobby in general. Like, is it uh, like more high hedging? Is it more just switching like you were talking about earlier? Just anything. What can you do with Bobby? What can you do as a team to really establish and say, hey, this is what we're going to be doing. I'm not a head coach in the NBA. I'm not going to be able to have that answer. Hopefully Doc can. Yeah, Doc and his 55 assistants. Oh, my God. I forgot there's 10 billion assistants. Um, Shout out to Doc, man. Expert. um, Why can't I think of the word? Networker. Expert networker. Uh, I think that that is up there. And I think when I think of the Bucks' defensive identity in the Doc era, I'll always think of that Thunder game when they just kind of bullied the Thunder with physicality, like Brooke hung out in the middle. They kind of switched around the perimeter around him. Would love to see more of that. But I kind of think the defensive identity under Doc is just a more versatile defense. So I'm excited to see, to your point, how they implement that with the new players and just like, can they do a better job of including everyone, i.e. Bobby? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give the obvious answer. I want Damon Giannis to just destroy the world on offense. Like that's that's what I'm looking for. That's going to be the number one thing. So I want to see the actions with those two. And really, it's not just those two. I want to see things move crisper off of them as well. Like if Dame gets trapped, I want to see an immediate second action, not just throw it to someone in ISO. Um, so really just all sorts of the Dame and Giannis and just Dame offense in general. I would like to see it a little bit more dialed in, especially like Dame's fit, knowing when to shoot, things like that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're right. That is That is the big one. Yeah, I mean, defense uh, and, is very important as well. But we just got to see what this top 75 uh, team can do, right? Yeah. Like, that's the reason they're brought together. Still want to see it happen. Please. Still want to see it happen. I want to see it happen all year, but I really want to see it happen in late April and May this year and beyond. So please, Bucks. Please. We're begging. Yeah. Uh, Sincerely. Next question, uh, last Discord question from our pal Andrew. Uh, a moment of silence for him and all Carolina Panthers fans. The only blowout of week one was on the hands of the New Orleans Saints, the most mid-team of all time. I'll tell you what, when Derek Carr is talking trash to your secondary, something's gone wrong. Oh, he said I threw three touchdowns on you to Joe Horn, the second or the third or whichever, you know, baby Joe Horn. Brutal. Just Derek like, Carr, isn't he like super Christian? I think so. I mean, like, he didn't look it. I mean, he was talking a lot. Of, eh, not a good feeling, dude. Yeah. I'm not I even, I don't give me, I used to root for the Saints. I was watching that game like, this is brutal. What was Bryce Young's first pass of the season was an interception? I mentioned He's this bad. on one of our primo pods. Like, they needed, like, the market insufficiency for Bryce Young and, like, Kyler Murray and stuff. You need to get shorter offensive linemen. I think you're on to something. But then the problem is, like, the other team doesn't necessarily have shorter defensive linemen, so maybe it still doesn't help. That's fair. <laughs> maybe maybe short QB is a market inefficiency for a reason. That's that's also fair. <laughs> but not looking so good. We're no. sorry, Andrew. Yeah. Um, but his question is, how happy are you that you don't have to listen to Pat Bev's podcast anymore? I didn't listen to it to begin with, so <laughs> fine. <laughs> the two episodes I listened to, I will say the info on the Bucks was actually kind of good to get. Like, he's such a yapper. Um, but I, I'm I'm glad to be over the whole Pat Bev experience. I'll say that. Yeah, very happy to be over Pat Bev. Second on the list. Don't have to hear anything about Rowan anymore. Yes. That Pat Bev's getting himself in some tumultuous. Pat Bev is right that's why I said Pat Bev's first. Like I'm very happy. I don't have to listen to Pat Bev anymore. Yeah. Uh, Pat Bev is a wild, wild person. Uh, okay, to Twitter now. I think I think we're gonna get them all in this time. Thankfully, it was a, a good collection of questions here from Clayton at C Keller one forty one. I saw Jules also asked your rotation question here. We got you already, Discord Discord members. You're always getting answered. But Clayton asks a lot of the coaching staff has head coaching experience. Do you think that is positive or negative for the growth and minutes of the young guys? Also for versatility of scheme. What do you think? I, I think probably for versatility versatility of scheme more than necessarily development of young guys. In terms of like what we I've observed, head coaches aren't necessarily responsible for player development. So that I don't necessarily think that really aligns with like, oh, means good things for the young guys or anything like that. I think the Bucks have a good player development staff in place to be able to do that. 
but in terms of like head coaching experience on the coaching staff, I don't think that necessarily correlates. But I mean, diversity of scheme, yeah, a hundred percent. You have so many different guys who have uh, coached at many different levels across the years, across the decades, with so many different players. I mean, Doc covers that on his own, but it's it's fine. It's it's good and encouraged to have that experience from other places as well. I don't necessarily think it's going to be a too many cook situation. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think because it doesn't seem like I we're not going to get another. Uh, oh God, what's no. his name? Uh, yeah, when Adrian what's Griffin his name? yelled at um, Terry Stotts. Terry Stotts, thank you. Yeah, I think there's multiple different ways to be a good head coach in a pro sports league. So I think the one everyone thinks of is like the scheme tactician, the spo, so to speak. But I think there's other approaches. I think there's like the player development centric ones, which are maybe like Kenny Atkinson, someone like that. And then there's like the CEO where it's like you're running the ship, you delegate, like, you know, you put guys in the right positions, whether it's players or coaches. I think that's probably the doc one. Like, I think he leans on his assistants a lot. I think we saw like Rex Kalamian and him did some really interesting defensive things late last season in the playoffs, for example. And I think it's great that he has more established voices there because I think Doc, for all of the weaknesses people will point out, has done a good job building really good coaching staffs and leading on those staffs. So I don't know if the head coaching experience, like you said, matters as much for the young guys. I don't think it's a negative for the growth in minutes of the young guys. Like I I don't think that – I think the more voices you get, ultimately the better product you're going to get overall, I think in any setting. Like I think that's a good thing. So I would say ultimately like – If the coaching staff is like a bunch of experienced guys who are not afraid to speak their minds, I think that probably means it's more likely a young player who deserves minutes will get them. But I don't know if it means like all young players will play more or grow more. I do think they have a lot of good coaches and that will help the young guys overall. Uh, And for versatility of scheme, I agree with you. Like having a bunch of experienced, really savvy coaches is going to help. And we've seen like we know for a fact Doc is not like Bud in which he did not come in and be like, these are the two things we do. I don't care what else is going on. This is what we're going to do. He was throwing everything at teams throughout the course of the season. So I think we know it's going to be a versatile scheme. I think it's going to work out uh, well for that reason. And I really like the coaching staff they've assembled. Yeah. I mean, there's so much good talent there. We got to keep the prunt dog. That's all that matters. Yeah. I mean, prunty just being like, I'm just going to cook up the most diabolical slob plays you've ever seen sideline out of bounds. Like that's going to be fun. He's good at it, man. He is. I'm so happy that Joe Prunty got to be interim again. Like, you have no idea. How- <laughs> I mean, hopefully <laughs> we don't get another one this year. If that happens, I might be done. Yeah, I don't know if I could take that. I might be done. It was good for content, though. I'll tell you that. We've had enough con- I want championship content. That's what I'm looking forward to. I don't need any more drama content. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Uh, next question from Where's Grant? Uh, where at Where is Grant J? How optimistic are you that Ajax plays a significant role in the rotation come playoffs? Will he have the sophomore leap that we hope? And if so, uh, when the Bucks are conservative with minutes on Middleton during the regular season, will Bucks fans not freak out? Uh, second part first. Bucks fans are always going to freak out. They're going to freak out. They're always I mean, going to freak out. Bucks fans. Yeah. A lot in, of the people we're speaking in quote to unquote right Bucks now, fans tied to. Yeah, I did edit yeah. quotes. A lot of people we're speaking to who are listening to this right now are going to go, oh, that sucks. I wish Chris was healthy, but I understand. The people who post, I, you know what I see because I joined some of these groups. The Bucks Facebook is the worst. Facebook God. in general. You oh open up Facebook God. and it's just like, here's 85 posts of just straight up misinformation. Just like not even close to real information. Like I'll pull it up and be like, Jordan Love got cut. And I'm like, what? I like pull up anything else. It's like, no, it's just like literally someone just said this and it just stays there. It's an insane place. Please don't use Bucks Facebook. Go go anywhere else. Just listen to the Euro stuff. Um, it's bad. But um, what's bad? The Euro stuff? No, Bucks Facebook. <laughs> okay. We're good. <laughs> like, just listen to the Euro stuff. It's bad. <laughs> I was still thinking about Facebook. It's just a, a wild place. I'm a marketplace guy now. A lot of them old. I'm just like looking for deals all day. But uh, well, that's fine um some golf clubs there you go yeah a painting Ooh. yeah it's when when someone wants to unload something they just price it low and that's when you got to swoop in oh yeah so you do a look for that that's ridiculous <laughs> how optimistic are you that ajax plays a significant role in the rotation come playoffs not very yeah I mean, playoffs what do you got to be to play in the playoffs i mean 
early, maybe the tenth man, but like really play in the playoffs. We're talking what eight? It took him Giannis and Dame and Chris being hurt to play last year in the playoffs. Yeah. So I'm not optimistic at all, unless there's just like a massive leap, but I'm not factoring that in. Yeah. I mean, I just think you have to be, I, I think you look at this team and we mentioned the starting lineup, the two other new additions, obviously one is starting in Trent, but then Delon Wright and Torian Prince and Bobby is eight. I think one more out of Pat, AJ Green, or any young guy is then nine. I mean, in the playoffs, you don't play that many players. Maybe you play 10 in like the first game. You you take it down pretty quickly. That's just going to be really hard to do on this Bucks team. So if he is an every game playoff player, he's made a huge leap or something's gone really wrong. Uh, hopefully it's the optimistic one if it happens, but I'm not, I'm not expecting that. I'm excited about Ajax. I think it's a kind of tough fit with Giannis and he's got to iron out his offensive and defensive deficiencies to play more regularly. I think that's completely fair. I just, I don't know. It's just hard to do. I think that's what I I want people to recognize. Like none of these young guys, you should believe like, oh, they're going to be a top eight player on this team because the top eight players on this team are all guys right now where I go, I trust that player in the playoffs. You could squabble Bobby if you want. He's also the only big and he's, He's been there before. He won a championship. This is like, Tyler I'm... Smith oration. What do you mean? He's the only big. Oh, I mean, listen. Hey, all right. <laughs> He's Jake the only Fisher. big. We got Jake Fisher on the pod. I didn't even know. <laughs> your, your string of guests continues. Yeah. What a wild yeah. report. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I don't know where that one came from. I think that was someone who really wanted Brooke Lopez. I'll say this. Looking that in at, the like, draft is having me like, Jake, what's going on, man? I know. This, yeah, that was a that was a bad time. This, uh, every time I see anything about like, oh, why didn't this player just acquire a stretch five? I'm like, no wonder this Brooke Lopez rumors. There's like five of those players. Yeah, it's him. I, it's Tingus Pingus, Miles uh, Turner, Wemby, B, and like Jaron. Yeah, who's not? I would not even a five. No, you're right. Can't play the five. That didn't go well. Like they need to put someone next to him. Like it's a very very rare archetype. Yeah. You see Robert Williams is uh, apparently on the on the market. Um, of course he is. Yeah. They have 15 centers. Dude, I have these seven. One of them's pick. making $200 million. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. I'll ask you a mailbag question. I'm in Ooh. a dynasty basketball league, fantasy basketball. I have the second pick in the rookie draft. Who do you even take? Who's Ailis? Really? Why not? I think he can contribute right away in Chicago. Contribute to what? I'm leaning Reed Shepard if he's there. Reed Shepard's solid. Had the best summer league, I think, by far from the rookies. I don't know. That's just summer league. I was going to say, as we know, that directly correlates. I know. Uh, But he looked really good from the jump. I I just like – it's so funny though because like the top two picks, I'm like, if they fall to me – I also have eight. Like if they fall to me at eight, I don't know if I want to take Alex Saar if he's there or – Risa Shea. Risa Shea. Like, I, I have no idea if they're going to be good players. Still can't what believe he was the number one pick. What a mess of a draft. That's why I'm like, Buzelis. Like a hometown Chicago kid who's playing for the Bulls. He, the Damar is gone. There's an open uh, scoring yeah. point. I got to think about it more. I, I kind of like Castle, but again, like, he could just be bad. Yeah. Weird draft. Okay, Calvin Willie. Or Wiley, maybe. Outside of overall health and the stars playing up to the level that we expect them to, what is the main key, all caps, to a Bucks championship next season? So this Chris is a Middleton. good question. Chris Middleton. Is But is that – but I think he covers that. Both in – he said outside of health and the stars oh, playing up to I the guess. level that we expect. It's a good question because it takes away a lot of our standard answers. Hmm. I'm going to say – who? I'll say, I know. The, I'll say the malleability of the rotation. Okay, I like that. The malleability of the rotation. Like, how flexible yeah. can a guy like DeLon Wright be? How flexible can uh, Gary Trent Jr. be? Can Torian Prince be? Can Chris Livingston be? Yeah. Like, how can these guys really be, like, a very versatile and flexible lineup? I think that will dictate how far the Bucks can go in the playoffs. I think that's good. My my, what I was leaning toward was kind of similar, but like, can they get enough defense out of four or five? And so, can Brooke 
I, I think was underrated last year. Can he maintain his level of play? I think probably yes, but we'll see. And then, like, can they defend with Bobby and can they find a stretch forward? Like, all of those, I think, are kind of answered in a stretch forward to play next to Giannis at the five. I think all of those are kind of bundled together for me in, like, finding enough ways to play defense, different styles across the four or five. I feel good about the one through three. I think they can combine enough. I think Giannis and Brooke cover for a lot. I think they need they need a couple different good four or five options. I think they have one in Giannis Brooke. I think it's finding out what are the other ones, how does Bobby fit in, et cetera. Um, Chris okay. Maxelton. Yeah. Would you rather the team spend the season finding lineups and rotations that work against the most scenarios or see them develop more of a situational approach based on opponent with several iterations? I'd like to think the latter, but we watched 2021 happen with one punch per se. I would even disagree with that. I think it was a couple punches. Yeah. But I, I understand the I understand the position. Yeah, it was either they played big with Brooke or they did PJ Giannis. Was to, to simmer it down. Bobby played some as well late. Um, so yeah, it was Bobby was punches. big in the finals. Bobby was, was closing. He was closing yeah. games. Yeah. It's an interesting uh, question for sure. Uh, also, Chris Maxelton was crazy. Yeah, the at is ridiculous. That's the display name. So a couple of a couple of good names here. Um. I don't necessarily think there's going to be an issue of finding lineups and rotations. Like we established already, yeah. there's a pretty solid top eight. Yeah. And, and it's just going to be around the margins where you see guys coming in and out of the rotation, or if something goes catastrophically yeah. wrong. Yeah. Like DeLon Wright forgets how to play basketball or something like yeah. that. Like, hey, then I'll tell you what, Markel Fultz signed me up. Still but unsigned. Still uh, unsigned. Crazy. We were talking he could have a chance to start on the box. I mean, Lonnie Walker, Exhibit 10. Like, it's, uh, it's a tough that, market that for That really annoyed me. Yeah. He may not even make the team. People are like, oh, he's for sure going to. Like, if he's for sure going to, they would just sign him. They didn't sign him. He he might be a G League player. Um. So, yeah, to my but, point, like, the, you don't necessarily need to find your rotations. I think the rotations mostly exist in terms of who's going to be playing. Yeah. So I think situational approach approach based on opponent, I think that's very viable to happen. I, I think, frankly, they've already found the lineups and rotations that work against the most scenarios. Again, they had, like, the best four- and three-man lineups in the league last year uh, when accounting for high minutes. And I'd be shocked if inserting Gary Trent for Malik Beasley ruined those lineups, right? Like, it's, he's just better. It should make them better. So I, I think they've, they've kind of already got the first one done. So now it's a situational approach of really what's our best way to go small uh, without Brooke when Brooke gets forced off the floor. I think that is the number one thing they need to discover. So that's going to be what we're, I think a lot of people are most interested in seeing. And then offensively, it's just refining it. But again... Even the clunky Damianis, they killed teams. Like they absolutely steamrolled teams, especially when Chris was out there too. So yeah, I think they've I think they're farther along on the first part than people think, but they do need to do the second part. I think so too. Uh we got uh, two questions about Giannis and Dame getting together. Yes. I don't know. I tried to find out. I know, me too. Thing. And it's like a lot of things happened. I mean, uh what is this? From at B Lange double zero with the, the Dame Time emoji as the display name. And DJ but, Mix also asked, I think the same, if they've been getting work in together this summer. Yeah, but it's like Giannis had the injury, Olympics, wedding. Uh, unless I missed something. I, I think there was a plan in place, but I don't know if that they really... Said it. They said it after the season that Giannis was going to go to Portland. So there's still some time. Um, so I... I, I I think we'll see. I think maybe it did happen, and we just don't I know. I think the as Olympics well. kind of took that plan out of the water because it's like if they yeah. if Greece didn't make the Olympics, it's like okay, yeah, let's go to Portland, let's hang out. Then it's like, oh, we're in the Olympics. <laughs> like, yeah, I am the flag bearer for my nation. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, I'm totally wrong. Wait, no, no, I'm not. Oh no, What's training camps open September 25th. So there's two. Oh no, that's only if you play preseason outside of North America. October 1st. So technically next month, training camps open. So there's like three, four weeks here. It, maybe it's going to happen in the next three or four weeks. If not, yeah. they'll have all of camp, et cetera. We'll see. Giannis is still in Greece. Probably. Likely Scott thing Mary, for him to what, do. Last week. Yeah. Seemed like, a, seemed like a fun time. Thanks for the invite, Giannis. Yeah. What the hell? LeBron yeah. gets to go, but we don't. Yeah. Mbappe gets to go, but we don't. 
what a what a what a wedding the greek prime minister yeah what and, a but list. we don't but we don't <laughs> but we don't i'll Once tell you what sir rohan kadi doesn't get the invite <laughs> was do do we do we think okay so here's the funniest thing about that is like there's so many photos right and it's like we see a photo of dame at a wedding and it's like oh it's probably Giannis, right but it's like Evan Turner is in the photo. <laughs> like, I don't know if Evan Turner is invited. If Evan Turner is invited, the honest is invited, but I'm not. I'm upset. <laughs> Maybe after that bathroom run in, he was leery to send you the invite. Listen, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't know he was in there. <laughs> oh, that's that's what they all say. I didn't. I didn't even get in. <laughs> Security turned me away. I'm like, why? And it's like, bro, Giannis is there. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, I'm just trying to go to the bathroom. Like, that was so funny. Oh my goodness. But only yeah, in Oshkosh. Get your home tickets today. Only in Oshkosh. But I don't. I'm not necessarily like concerned about this at all. Like, no. like, it's fine. I think they'll have plenty of opportunities to spend time together. And again, we have like three weeks still until training camp would actually start. The Bucks don't play, correct? They 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 don't have a one of the out of country. I believe I don't believe this year. So. Um, so you know, not till October one actually. So slightly not still less than a month, but not technically this month. Um, so maybe it's still. I mean, you know, I don't think they were ever going to spend like four straight weeks together. So maybe like a few out, days. Yeah, spend a, a long weekend or something or a week at, in Portland or wherever they spend it. Like, that's that's fine with me. So I haven't seen the reports yet to answer the question, um, but there's still a chance here. So we'll see. But yeah, Giannis I mean, the, up being the young guys is in linking up with Dame. All the time, which is super cool. Love it. I don't think we've seen that kind of engagement. I mean, I think it was probably happening before and it was just quieter. Yeah, maybe. But it's like, you know, it's, it's not as high profile. Yeah, you're right. Like, Chris Middleton isn't doing those brickly runs or anything <laughs> like, he's got a videographer and i feel like the guy's only allowed to post like once a year there's like one and the rest of it's like no we can't share this yeah it's just him getting surgery yeah well well no maybe but, um and Giannis isn't doing like those brickly runs or anything like no he said he's taking his ig back so i think these posts are from him mm. lately which is fun sure they are Giannis. Sure congrats to Giannis and Mariah. Yeah, no. Yes, congrats. Even though I wasn't invited. Yeah. Uh, Kanto Usupa, Osupa asks, what are your most anticipated games of the season? It's a good question. Spurs, honestly. Opening uh, night and then the 81 after it and then whatever comes after that for me. I'm ready. Give me Bucks yeah. basketball. Oh, yeah. I would take – I was going to say Bucks magic because that's how I was, you always throw the magic, but now the magic are good. I would take Bucks hornets and I'd go crazy right now. I'm ready for a ball. I would take Bucks blazers. I guess that is Dame intrigue. What's the unappeasing Bucks game now? Pistons. That's divisional. Your guy the Zards. Paid. Yeah, I'd take Bucks wizards I would even take Bucks. That's a, that's a great call. Bucks wizards Wizards are now the team you should throw in when it's like – Oh, no, no, no. It's the Nets. I'll always enjoy beating the Nets still, but that's probably true. Yeah, at least like, you know, the Wizards theoretically have a, a seven-footer who can do things. Yeah, they have a top pick now. That's fun. Yeah. Good call. No, but the Spurs, honestly, like Giannis Wemby, we got one of those last year. Ooh, and it was electric. Was electric. Yeah. So I hope that Wemby plays in Milwaukee because I'm trying to go to that game. Yeah, that's a that's a must-see early Wemby. You could, it would be a lead if you caught uh, Spurs and Lakers in the same season. Late stage Ooh. LeBron, early stage Wemby. Like, there's some good options there. Listen, I've been fortunate to see, like, a lot of good players in person. Like, Have you seen Bron? I've seen Bron. I have I went to the game where it went double OT, uh, where Brogdon dunked on Kyrie and LeBron in the same game. Oh, nice. And LeBron's just hitting half-court bombs to, to oh, win yeah. the game. And it's like, I'm witnessing greatness. We are all witnesses. <laughs> we are all witnesses. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've seen, uh, like... It's it's good to see them. So I want to I want to see one day really badly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I need to see Brown still, and hopefully I have a lot of time to do it. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's no doubt. But you want to get you know a great Giannis Wemby matchup that would be electric to be in the building for. Mm -hmm. That's a good call on Spurs, and then you know opening night Sixers. 
The Celtics games, kind of. They've had weird regular season. The games Celtics lately. ones, two of only two of the three are on national TV. I can't be bothered with the Celtics ones this year. It's not even the team that's going to uh, potentially face them in the playoffs. It's going to be a different version of that team because they all happen in this calendar year, as we've talked about. So who knows? Yeah, not as exciting. Uh, how many minutes do you think AJ gets? Uh, AJ Green, twenty-five to twenty per night. Ajax. I don't know. Five to ten. It, d- it depends. AJJ, none unless it's a rest game, or then 30 with the herd. Yeah. I think that's fair. Too many AJs. I know. I, I, I don't know which one he meant, but I if it's AJ Johnson, I don't think from, very from much. JP. Yeah. J Phil in F- file in Texas. TX. Um, okay. What's the uh, is the bench and supporting cast actually good enough for a deep postseason run? Also, can Giannis stay healthy and will Dame have a bounce back season from Man, Zorico? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I think for the first part, yeah. I think yeah, absolutely. Bench, I think the supporting cast and bench, like we've talked about, this is the probably the deepest team they've had in a while, which is good considering we said that last year too. Yeah. But I think they, they the supporting cast is good because they upgraded at every single position which they had a departure for. Yeah. So I think that's definitely the case. I think the supporting cast is there. Can Giannis stay healthy? Knock on wood, man. Like I think he yeah. can. I think, I think really is a different question, but for sure he can. We've seen it before. It's like this is an a, an anomaly of a run for two years in a row for Giannis to be hurt. Like Giannis I mean, does not get hurt. His three big injuries are the hor- the uh, the awkward fall against Atlanta, falling directly on his back because Kevin Love sucks against Miami. And then just clear over usage that got to his calf ultimately against Boston. But we could see the signs in the weeks before it. It's not like it's like, oh, he's got a knee that just always goes bad. It's two, I would say, flukes or just things that happen. And then one over you. So I think you play him less and just hope you don't get the flukes. And then Dame, I think for sure. I'm buying into the Dame hype. Dame was putting up 30-point halves on one leg, man. Yeah. Like, I'm he, all that, that man can do anything in the postseason. Yeah. I'm in on that. So, yeah, I think I, I'm answering that question with optimism. Yeah. I'm buying the Bucks. I can't wait, man. October 1, I'm, I'm so sneaking excited. in. I'm going to be up in Fiserv with Binox. <laughs> Can we just get invited? That'd be better. That would work, too. I would still sneak in, though, for the content. <laughs> um, I think that's all of them. Yeah, we, we already answered the give us your preferred 10-man, 11-man rotation um uh, oh we got we got a, a, a one at the oh. buzzer here gigs oh this is for you any concern about tenasis not being on the bench this year all rohan jokes aside ta seems to be a big part of keeping Giannis even during games great news they'll probably be there i hope so man big jim reported jim mozarski he's allowed to report he's allowed to travel with the team as a family member so mm-hmm. i think he's gonna be he just, there he can't be on the bench but there's seats right there Yes. He's going to be there. Who, who's going to – oh, sir, 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 please sit down. Some security guards can, can go up to the nasty? I don't think so. He'll be there. No. He'll be there. Uh, wish him all the best in his recovery. Seems to yeah. be progressing well. He doesn't appear to have like a, a walking boot or anything at I this thought point. He had some, I thought he had something out in a recent pick, but I, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, bring him back next year. Come back better. Yeah. Yeah. Well – Good role, I think. Anyway, let's not argue this right now. Yeah, uh, I think that's all the questions. What a yeah. great mix of questions. A perfect mailbag. A perfect mailbag indeed. And yeah, thank you to everyone who submitted questions. Again, we answered the ones on Discord first. If you want to find that link, go to gspn.info. Go to the About page. You can also subscribe for GSPN Premium there. Eight bucks a month. You can get the commercial-free versions of all gspn pods you can get access to exclusive gspn after dark pods plus all of our written content plus bonus content all of that stuff is there at gspn.info it's a fun time fun after dark coming up that i I don't think i can actually like participate (laughs) in but i won't spoil it here but yeah check it out fun one coming up make sure you subscribe there but thank you for listening make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening to this or watching this podcast platform of choice youtube uh, respectively make sure you leave a five star rating and review on your podcast platform of choice subscribe to the youtube subscribe everywhere uh engage in the comment section a lot of good engagement in the comment section uh on the youtube but yeah uh make sure you subscribe wherever you're you're checking this out tell your family and friends about the show spread the good word about the eurostep as we uh approach this uh 
24 25 season i somehow was able to get through i'm back i did the i did the outro correctly Boom. so pod random we'll talk to you next time